Hello everyone, welcome to this product school webinar about building products that developers love. My name is Abhijit Mehta, I'm a principal technical product manager at Impala um, and I'll talk about a little bit about myself uh, in a bit. Today uh, we're going to uh, spend time talking about what developer products are, what does developer experience mean and how do we think about developer experience for those developer products but more specifically about API products. A little bit about myself. Um, for those who were in my previous webinar, uh, you would have you will notice a change now. Um, I have recently changed over jobs, uh, but yeah, as a quick background, I I had an engineering background for about a decade, performed different roles in various engineering functions, and from there I moved over to technical pre-sales at Twilio, helping uh, the customers and developers in in EMEA build uh, their products using Twilio APIs, and then I moved over to do product management at Twilio worked on uh, Twilio Flex and uh, some products on the customer engagement um, at Twilio. Of lately, I have moved over from Twilio to join a startup here in the UK. Um, the company is called Impala and I'm a principal technical product manager there. A bit about Impala. At Impala, we think that we are going to empower the developers and travel innovators across the world to, to enable them build incredible travel experiences. Um, we build API first products and augment them with dashboards and other related tools. So if you think about building a travel experience, you can go and quickly start building the travel experiences there. All right, so going to the topic for today, uh, products that developers would love. And uh, for doing that, we need to first understand what developer products are. What does it mean to build a developer product? Um, so we'll spend a bit of time understanding that. Please feel free to add questions to the chat. I will try to answer them towards the end of this uh, webinar as much as possible. Let's keep this interactive. Keep your comments and thoughts flowing through. Put them in the chat and I promise I'll get to them. Okay, so developer products. Um, if you think about products in general, uh, when you create product, basically you are creating, creating value for someone, a consumer, let's say. Um, if you create directly a product that a consumer can consume, um, then it's straightforward there, right? Like if I build um, this iPad, which the end user is going to use uh, and to see video, that's a consumer product. But there are a category of products which cannot directly be consumed by the consumer. It requires someone in the middle, a developer to consume and uh, create something out of it that a consumer can eventually consume and get value uh, out of your product there. So that's what developer product means. Now, the definition might be a little confusing if you're not familiar with this. Um, so I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, throughout this presentation, I'm going to talk uh, about developer products through my previous organization, Twilio, and examples from my current organization, Impala. And I will also be bringing examples from some of the other developer first uh, companies like Stripe or Plaid. Um, so none of these are uh, meant to talk about those companies, but these are examples uh, of how companies are creating incredible developer experiences through developer first products. Uh, let's take Stripe for example. If you're building uh, an e-commerce website, you might want to use Stripe for the checkout and payment flow. So the product that Stripe is building is a checkout and payment uh, APIs and SDKs and UIs, which you as a developer of e-commerce uh, company would want to use so that your consumers can take value out of it. In this case, if you were an employee uh, and a developer at, at Stripe, you are building the developer uh, products here. Those APIs are developer products. If we take example of Twilio, um, if you are building products that someone in an e-commerce company is going to consume uh, to create customer support, to take incoming calls, to send SMS, then these products are at Twilio are developer first products. Uh, APIs and SDKs and programmable apps. Um, talking about my current organization, Impala, here we create APIs that someone uh, could use and create hotel room booking um, in minutes and create those travel experiences. So the Impala products in this case, the APIs at Impala are developer first products. And hope, hopefully this gives you an idea about what a developer product would be. Now, when we talk about developer products, developer experience is a key because um, your consumer and your users are developers. So let's, let's look at this first before we talk about um, developer experience. Let's say you're writing creator of a programming language and you, you create a programming language and you write a bucket documentation and your code looks like this. I'm sure this can be readable. 
um, and a developer can understand. But this is not a great experience. You, you're going to put in a lot of effort and it might take a longer time to learn and then understand what this is mean. Um, on the alternate, if you were to write something like this, looking and reading this is much more simpler. You can actually quickly understand that what this piece of code is trying to tell you is that if your consumer or your user is a developer, then the experience of them is called as developer experience. And this is all to say that developer experience is about um, the developers who are consuming your APIs, your SDKs, your UI components and whatnot. Let's let's look at the definition. What does what does it mean? What what do we mean when we talk about developer experience? And simply put, if you want to think on a very abstract level, interactions and feelings that a developer has when working with a body of code to meet a specific object. Now, if you are the creator of uh, that that piece of code and APIs, then the experience and the develop, uh, interactions that developer will have uh, while consuming your code to build their own applications. That's what developer experience is. Here is uh, a slightly different, uh, but very good definition as well. What is developer experience about? Why does it matter? It is about minimizing friction from idea to code. How can a developer land at your product, your developer product with some idea and how quickly they can take uh, that idea using your product, turn it into something that discovers uh, and delivers uh, a business value. So that's what developer experience is. These are like pretty good uh, way to think about developer experience. I've mentioned the source of these definitions. I've not created this, but I really like this way of defining uh, the developer experience. Um, so before we go and talk about how do we create developer experiences, let's look at and understand who is your customer as a as a product company, as an organization building developer experience, uh, developer products, how do you think about your customer? Um, I think in my head, when I'm working as a product manager of a developer product, I think of consumer or end user as the, as the person who would consume the actual end value of uh, whatever will be created using my APIs. But I think of developers as the users uh, and, the, and the consumer of my APIs. And with that definition, actually, you could be creating a developer product at various layers. You could be creating something at the storage, uh, MongoDB, for example, right? Um, you could be creating APIs that abstracts away the physical world complexities. Um, we talked about examples earlier. Uh, Twilio abstracts away the complexity of telecom infrastructure and exposes that as an API. Impala, my current organization, abstracts away the complexity of connecting uh, to a hotel, creating direct relationships, and exposes that through an API. Um, on top of APIs, there is another layer, which are SDKs. SDKs, just to define, um, are a layer on top of your pure API, uh, API layer um, with embedded session management, logging. Like this is the whole software development kit. This will have declarative interfaces. Um, and then you could ultimately have a UI based developer experience or developer product, um, UI components, a programmable app and running across all of these, there could be developer tools and um, the way to deploy a developer product into production. Um, Netlify is a good example that lie in this category where you could write a piece of code and it has tools that you could use to quickly deploy each of your comments and test it. So, so developer products could lie in various, various of like each of these areas. Um, the core and the principle, um, in, at least in, in my opinion, uh, area where a lot of developer products are being built today are the API. That's the base, like you, you, you start with that layer, um, whether you are building any of these. So today we're going to focus a lot about API developer products. Um, so base principles for creating good, um, great developer experience when building an API products. These uh, as you build your API products, you should keep these high, high level things in mind. Um, so every API product that you're creating should be consistent. Developers should not be required to learn all the new conversation, uh, all the new conventions when moving between products. Um, it should be consistent in its form, in its structure, its reporting, its error. It should be all those API products should look like they belong um, to one set of uh, product suite should be self-serve, it's very example, uh, oh, sorry, very, very important. Um, developers prefer helping themselves. I've been a developer for a decade myself. And the first thing as a developer, I would want to go is be, to be able to try something out. Um, so this should be self-serve. You shouldn't have friction 
um, to start using and validating your API uh, or before you can uh, before a developer can you know be confident about that. So don't start bringing in your in, in my opinion sales right in the beginning before someone can try and try and play with your API products. Um, ungated similar uh, when protecting uh, some the functionality behind an API, it's okay to uh, to protect parts of that, but the functional part of your API, the thing that it should be do, doing should be ungated so that they can go and validate the idea. It should always be updated. Nothing would put a, a developer programmer off if while building uh, building their piece of code, they're using a library API product and they realize that this is out of date. So make sure this is up to date. Um, when they go into your API product, start reading about it, um, a good developer experience requires that there should be a visible and feasible path to deployment. So, so bring bring things into your product that will that will help them wave through that path. And be honest, um, it does what it says. Um, product documentation, release notes, change log, README, they're all consistent with the actual product behavior. So keeping these base principles in mind will enable you create developer um, API products that have great developer experience. We're going to go into each of these areas in a little bit in, a, in, a, in more detail and look at some examples uh, now. So consistent APIs. Um, the examples of how you can think about making your API consistent is mentioned on the right hand side. Um, the request and the response structures, um, the error codes, the definitions of the attributes, what it means, the pagination structure, any metadata along with the actual uh, output um, and the full functionality. This should these are things if you if you like treat, treat, treat this as a checklist um, and you are able to uh, take all of these, you can be pretty confident that your APIs are being liked by the developers who are consuming it. Um, some examples you would see here, I'm going to show a Twilio example. Um, there are these two products. One is about messaging, uh, the other one is about voice. And if you look carefully at, at these two, the structure of them are pretty uh, pretty common. So if I'm a developer uh, in, and my organization starts wants to start with sending SMSs um, and later on add voicemail, the learning curve moving from a voice product or from a messaging product to voice will be going is going to be relatively um, smaller. And, and that's about you know one of the examples of how your APIs are consistent. Um, API playground. So as you're thinking about developer experience, um, it is very important uh, that a developer can go into your documentation and be able to play with it uh, somewhat without writing a piece of code as well. So if you are able to create uh, a mechanism when they can go and get an API key rather quickly and you know try an API right with that key without having to write code, that is an awesome experience. It, it helps that developer understand and grasp uh, your API rather quick. And some of the example here um, are um, Twilio's and Impala's dashboard. You can sign up in like two minutes, get API key and um, try it out, uh, right either in the in the documentation itself um, or in a, in a simple way, you can actually export the APIs in Postman and try. The experience of trying the API right in the documentation is amazing. Um, it, it just removes a lot of friction. Uh, so for example, uh, I mentioned uh, if you were trying Impala APIs, you can actually paste the API key right there. You've got the parameters there and you can directly try the API in less than a minute. So, so the, having an API playground to try your uh, API products is, is an awesome experience. Um, debugging. So as you build, I think this is all of us who have, who have developed products would know that as you build API products, or sorry, as you build products, um, you you might you will most likely have some errors. Um, anything that can help the developer debug quickly is going to be very key in, in how they like and perceive your product. So think about clear and accurate error codes. Think how they how can they subscribe errors, not necessarily in the code, but, but generally getting information about error. It could be something that is long running uh, or running automatically and there is an error and there should be a way to subscribe it. And if you're giving an error code, um, I think it helps a lot if your error message has a pointer to the docs, which can talk about what this error code is and what is a potential solution. So think about that whole error mechanism and the debugging experience as a part of the developer experience you're building as well. Um, so as now, now we have moved from the ability to build a product and debug it, and now thinking about um, how, do, how, how do you keep your developers informed informed about changes that's going to happen in your product, right? 
So status pages, release notes, change logs, alerts, programmatic way of subscribing to warnings, maybe through web books. So let's say my um, simple example, I, I pay, pay to your API products per, per API usage and my account balance gets low. Now this is a clear example where you could actually have information being sent programmatically. Maybe they have auto recharge they could set. Um, maybe there is um, your, your quota of um, um, API consumption is crossed and then you have webhooks telling them that now you have consumed all the APIs and now developer can do something about it. So making sure that these updates are available either to the code itself or to the runtime running of the code is, is very, very important. Um, I'll go to show some examples. And uh, here's status page of various companies, um, Impala, Twilio, Stripe, Plate. Um, a developer can at any point go and look at the status, live status of the systems there and uh, be confident that, uh, that, that the products they are consuming is up and running and, and is adhering to the SLAs. Um, talked about change logs. So as you introduce new features, as you change anything in the product, having a change log is also very, very, very important. And it, it is a way for a developer to go and see uh, if you've added new functionality, they can consume it. If you're going to change something, that should also uh, appear there as well. So think about change logs and, and publishing it closer to your product launch is, is a very good developer experience parameter. Um, various tools, if you are able to embed tools in your uh, product suite, um, command line interface, tools for observ observability and monitoring for deployment. Um, for example, if there's a piece of code uh, that can be customized and directly deployed through a serverless um, a mechanism, that is a very good develop developer experience and enables and removes the friction uh, for developer to deploy that functionality. So, so think about these parameters as well. Um, so this is an area which is often overlooked, um, but it's very important. Developer products with a community around it have more adoption than any other which don't. Um, there are various ways to build this community, write blogs, uh, webinars, YouTube videos, tutorials there. Stack Overflow is a great place for develop Reddit as well, where developers would go and talk about and solve each other's problem. And when you create this community, you will re you'll realize that your products and, and the queries for your products are actually solved between the communities as well. And, and that is uh, that brings this whole uh, set of developers who are working on, to, uh, on, on your product together and creates a community. Similarly, meetups, hackathons, conferences are a great way to create those community feeling too. So um, not something every organization can start with, but keep this in mind. And as you build your developer products, think about this as, 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 as a part of your developer experience um, without ignoring um, the value it brings. Some of the examples you'll see here, um, mostly from Twilio in this case, um, a YouTube channel where you'll see lots of quick starts, how to do things in two minutes and that kind of thing. Um, and then there are Twitch uh, telecasts as well. Now last but not the least is the documentation. This is like the heart of whole developer experience. Um, so making sure that you have detailed documentation you talk about everything that a developer would need to know in that documentation. Think of it as um, something you want to write without assuming that the end user knows about it. So be as descriptive as possible. Organize it in the right way though. And so it's easier to go and find and consume that information. Um, similarly, adding quick starts and stepwise tutorials of how to do a certain thing. If there are like 10 different use cases that your, um, that your product solves, write those out in detailed step. This could include also how do you um, integrate some other API products, but go and show them that path of, of um, taking an idea to, to a production version of the code. And if you can put a code samples with quick deploy options, that is just amazing. It gives a, a, a huge acceleration for any, any code to be written on your developer product. Um, you'll see some examples there. Uh, Impala, my current organization, if you want to go and book a hotel, um, using an API, you can just do that in five minutes. You'll see stepwise, um, um, in, uh, stepwise instructions there on how you can do that. You'll see similar uh, kind of tutorials, lots of them on Stripes, on Twilio, and some of the other great developer uh, product companies. And in general, keep it self-serve. Make sure that fun it is functionally complete and that functionality is accessible um, uh, to the developers without lots of gates and, and friction level there. Um, coming back to uh, this, this, 
this diagram where we where we saw that there are various developer various types of developer products. Um, so today we talked about APIs, but you could have developer products on each of these or any of these or all of these um, layers. So so um, if it is of interest, let me know in the chat and we can have follow up uh, webinars about other layers. Uh, but today um, today's time was about API products. Hope this was useful. Um, let me know if you uh, if you found anything um, um, interesting. If you want to discuss anything, put it in the chat and I'll come to it. Um, that's about it today. Thank you for listening to me. Um, here's my LinkedIn profile. So if you want to reach out to me, um, scan this code and it will take you to my LinkedIn profile. Um, all right. Thanks again. Hopefully this was useful to you and see you soon.